there, Mike. Thanks for uh, bringing us here. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happening here and the planning? Yeah, so this is a piece of land we've just taken on. Uh, seven years of potatoes and maize, so it's been fairly hammered about. A couple of really wet harvests as well um, in those years. So it's had a fair bit of grief over the period of time. So what we've done is split into two pieces here to try and sort of look at two different ways of, of uh, hopefully bringing it back around some reasonably good soil health. So what we did last autumn was to plant this part of it with um, a mixture of red clover and white clover. All came really well, uh, but unfortunately because of the really wet winter we've just had, uh, all the red clovers failed. So what we've got here now, about half of the, the, the green you see here is the white clover that survived and some of the white clover flowers here, which is flowering at the moment. Um, and what we've just what we did last week actually was to reintroduce some red clover. So if you look in the bottom here, these little all these little cotyledons here, this is the red clover that's growing now. So what we've done is stitch red clover back into it again with an iron block. And the intention is to, and we've done this in the past with other pieces of land that we've got, is to grow a crop of red clover, yeah. pure red clover. Um, red clover, fantastic deep roots, huge fibrous roots, really good at restructuring soil. And we'll use the red clover, cut it four times a year, and use it for silage for the cattle. The reason for putting the white clover in is what we what we're trying to do, and what we've sort of dreamt about doing over the years is establish an understory of white clover that will remain in the field. And this is a, a new variety that has stolons and rhizomes. So it has stolons on top of the ground, rhizomes underneath, a bit like wicks. Yeah. Uh, so it has a massive, really strong rooting structure. So it's almost it's not impossible to kill, but it is really, really tough stuff to kill with things like Roundup. So if in the, when we got this established, and after three years of cutting the red clover for silage, we'll then go back to an arable rotation, so we'll put wheat into it. And what I want to do is have this white clover with a really thick mat in the bottom so that it will remain there as an understory from then onwards. And, and supply, I guess, nitrogen to the growing wheat. So supply and... nitrogen... Improve, keep the soil structure, improve the soil structure, keep the living root in the in the ground all the time, give us soil armour on top, tick all the boxes in terms of what Gabe's principles are, uh, and also suppress weeds. So what we'd like to do, if we can do, is if we get a really good cover of this, is when we drill into it with the Moore's Uni drill, which is really, really low disturbance, is we don't actually have any weed seeds germinate, so we can get away from using herbicides.